bless everyone out there in Radio Land. This is Barry and Karen coming to you from Embracing Marriage Ministries. And this is Embracing Marriage Together with Barry and Karen. Uh, we're doing the marriage one tonight. And we thank God for you joining us uh, in the podcast. If you're hearing this, it's a pre-recorded podcast. And it's also a video podcast uh, on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, we want you to like, share, subscribe. Also, you can go and follow us on our different platforms as we um, endeavor to spread this message uh, to each and every one of you. Uh, again, we're coming to you talking about toxic relationships. This is Toxic, toxic Relationships Part 3. Uh, and uh, you will also see you know, above my head here, you will get, if you want to watch the previous podcast uh we got this the the link for it up above us you can watch it there uh we did one and two so you can be able to watch both of those i put them also in the description if you need to click on it directly mm -hmm. but anyway hello wife once again <laughs> <laughs> and we're hey, here hey, to yeah i want to get uh exactly where I was earlier. We was trying yeah. something. We were trying something new earlier. I think I, I don't sound the same <laughs> as I did earlier. He's my, okay, there it is. Um, one of the things uh, we were trying to find ways to go live because like I say, uh, I want to also, uh, before I saw I plug my brother, my brother also has a uh, Facebook live that he does and it's uh, uh, Let's Talk With uh, Bishop Willie Horn. He's on uh, Facebook, and you can go to Bishop W. R. Horn on Facebook, and you can join him there. Also, he's on Podbean. You can go to DestinyVictoryRadio.podbean.com. Uh, check if uh, check check him there, uh, and then he has his podcast there. Let's let's talk with yes. uh, Willie Horn, uh, Bishop Willie Horn, and that's yes. my brother. And my brother, he's uh, been doing this. For for a little while he actually was my previous co-host uh me and my brother actually uh, co-hosted the program that's for victory radio <laughs> yeah. and we actually he had uh we did oh god he did a bunch of episodes mm -hmm. i think before we actually shut it down i think we did like maybe 20 episodes and something yeah. like that wow. yeah uh, i did a lot of myself mm -hmm. and then he would in the days that he was able, he would co-host with me. So he, we did, and I did it like a lot. So I might have more than 20. It could be more than that. Mm -hmm. it, it was a lot. The schedule that I had then was different than I had now because I went live every day, Tuesday through Friday, uh, 10 to 10.30 in the morning. We did a 30-minute show. Mm -hmm. And I did that for like maybe six, seven months, I think it was something like that. Yeah. And uh, did six, seven months straight. And at, at the beginning of the first three months of it, I did it myself. And then my brother came in the last three months, and then we ended up uh, turning it, shutting it down. And I think I was I had a hiatus so at least six, uh, another seven months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we started it this year. And as you know, as you can see, I have a new co-host, and she's a whole lot prettier than my brother. <laughs> so she this is my wife for 20 years we celebrate our 20th year anniversary on june the 7th yeah. and uh which is coming up soon this monday yeah. man this year is going by quick y'all yeah looking forward yeah we're looking forward to we were yeah. thinking about taking off days but thanks to my selfish co-worker <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do that. But thank God we do work during the days and I get off and we'll, 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 have, do, time yeah, so. we'll have time to do something. And so it falls on a weird day of Wednesday, which is a Thursday night. So they won't see us again on Wednesday. I'm sorry. <laughs> so no, we're going we're gonna to celebrate that. But anyway, like I said, we've been dealing with toxic relationships. And like I said, if you want to see the previous one above my head, is the info information about that. Also, I also have another video that I want you to see, which is on last night, which is the one that we did previously before that, mm -hmm. uh, talking about toxic relationships and some of the things that we recapped on it. And, uh, so what we're going to basically, we came from a scripture and tonight though, we, we're just going to basically come from the article that we I actually found, mm 
because we want to try to find things that pertain to what we was talking about. And like I said, this is going to be the last part of this. And we're going to do the marriage one because the article actually uh, was a marriage uh, article. Mm -hmm. And it was talking about toxic relationships based uh, pertaining to marriage. And the actual article came from HuffPost. And the person that was the author of that, I had to recognize them because I don't want people's material to be plagiarized. Mm -hmm. uh, it came from... Uh, the writer was Brittany Wong. She was also a writer for HuffPost, and she actually wrote an article called 10 Habits of People in Most Toxic Relationships. And I liked the this one in particular because I didn't want to have a whole bunch of them because they had one time, but they had one called 35 Signs to Know That You're in a Toxic. No, I'm not fit to do 35. <laughs> no, I only oh have 40 min 45 minutes. I need to do 35 things in 45 <laughs> minutes. 10 is enough. 10 is too long. So it's going to be it's going to be brief. Uh, the thing is, uh, we went over it a little bit, and we <laughs> kind of just looked at us, and okay, and like, no, we we weren't doing this. Oh, but we did this, you know, <laughs> and that's kind of how it came across. You know, yeah. it was I was doing this, we were doing that, and we was doing this, and we weren't doing that, and mm -hmm. we were not like this, but we show was like this, and so yeah. half the list we did. <laughs> so you're gonna find out which half we talking about, all yeah, right? We did on last. Yeah. <laughs> and then we did this on last year. It wasn't no just no over the, the time. It was yeah, like yeah. one, well, it over was actually. Of, yeah, over the course of time. Well, I think it, actually it was between, it, was, it wasn't it was really uh, a whole year. No. It, it, it was, was off and on for about, about, from May to about, mm -hmm. May to the end of the year. So it was yeah. like maybe close to half a year. Because we did first good at yeah. the beginning of the year. So what, maybe about six months? Six months. Yeah. This was a six-month deal that we did all this. So yeah. <laughs> so actually, to yes, it felt like a year, but it mm -hmm. was actually six months. But it was the roughest six months of our life. And I think the reason why we uh, went through it is so that you could see uh, the result of it. You mm -hmm. could see that God basically brought us out of that, and that's the reason why we're here today. Um Mm -hmm. If you can't, if you can only see my head, I can see. I can't see me because that shirt, this shirt is black. <laughs> I can't see me with my head and my being fault. Because yeah. you uh, and my mic side my shirt, yeah, yeah my mic side myself. Yeah. So and we we probably had to uh, cut on some extra light, but I I don't have any extra. I, I don't feel like getting up. But so y'all yeah, y'all long as y'all can see us, that's all that matters. So yeah. anyway, it's, it's, you can see him. <laughs> yeah, we can see, but um. Like I said, 10, uh, they said 10 habits, mm -hmm. uh, 10 habits of, in a toxic relationship to, uh, that people have in a toxic relationship. You know, to make sure I said it right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 10 habits in the most toxic, the people in the most toxic relationships. And the number one one, mm -hmm. Uh, they are hypercritical. Number one, they are hypercritical of one another. Now, the basis that this person said this, I'm gonna quote some of it because mm -hmm. it's a lot of it's a. They give a whole paragraph in between. Mm -hmm. uh, Bonnie Ray Keenan, a therapist, uh, psychotherapist based in Torrance, California, says this: In a toxic relationship, and I quote: In a toxic relationship, there is a chronic uh, tone of criticism and tension. <clears throat> Excuse me. People, partners feel as though they can never please the other. Mm -hmm. uh, they describe walking the eggshells to stave off for criticism. This is learned behavior from the people, person's family of origin. A lot of people mm -hmm. learn this behavior, is what she said. Yeah. Um, wow. As also as I'm uh, just kind of read some of it. It says, mm -hmm. and it's set up to create the same kind of toxicity in the next generation. So if someone was raised by critical parents and observed them being critical to each other, it's natural as breathing to criticize. Mm -hmm. So one of the things this is saying, uh, Dr. Keeney was saying is that it is something that is, in you when you're hypercritical, that's mm -hmm. the first sign. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one of the signs. Yeah. So one of the signs that you know you're in a toxic relationship is that you're in, you're actually uh, in uh, you're overcritical of one another, hypercritical of one another. Mm -hmm. Every little thing they do, it's never enough. Or then when they, mm -hmm. then you you can't do wrong. Yeah. Because the other one can't, you can't, no matter how much you can, can't please the other person. That's and, it. And we were, that's one yeah. of the ones we were worried Yeah. 
and we were hypercritical of one another. You know, yeah. she, I was hypercritical of her. She was hypercritical of me, and yeah. we overly criticized each other. Is basically mm-hmm. what it means yeah. to over criticize. And you talk to, you know, over criticize. We never was. I never did anything right. Well, she, she never, never was, did this That's right, right. Yeah. and uh, you know it was, and it wasn't. And those yeah. words I told y'all not to use, never and, and always. always. <laughs> yeah, we we used it loosely. Yeah, and that was my favorite thing. You know, you always, and and no matter how hard I try, no matter yeah. what I do, yeah. nobody, and this uh this ongoing going babbling about yeah. uh putting them down, pointing out the flaws, shortcomings, you name it. He, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know everything. Oh, yeah. yeah, everything that we wasn't doing, we yeah. talked about right. it. Yeah, we yeah. made it known. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, we we, oh, yeah. we talked about how do we wouldn't, you know. <laughs> we made it known. Yeah, we made it known. To I made it known. Yeah. yeah, she she always made it known. But the brother had it. <laughs> yeah, she. Cause I, you know, and the thing it is, like right. I say, no, it wasn't right. We, I'm just being in my little jokey said, but no, but truth be told, no, that it, it wasn't right. No. And 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 I wasn't no better. I mean, I I was trying to throw, and we was like we was talking about we earlier uh, in the lesson where we did on uh, guard your heart, which mm-hmm. I can say that's another one I want to show you. Also, I have a description for that. Uh, you, when we were talking about that and talking about using the words, mm-hmm. we were having a war of words, and we was yeah. talking about how that we. Uh, when I say something about, she'll say something about what I'm doing, then I'll come back with a with a comeback, yeah. and she'll do the same thing. So it was yeah. like, about, it was like back tennis. Yeah, it was like you know. She served, I hit back. Yeah. I served, she hit back. Yeah. Then it's back. It was like tennis. It was yeah. like. And if he came, if he came back strong, and I feel like, oh. She had to come back strong. Yeah. So and then I, I had to come back strong. Yeah, Next thing like, you know, okay, we yeah. trying to we yelling over it, over trying to yeah, yell over so each other. So it was like we were just uh, trying to just make out come back. I'm like, oh, he gonna say what? <laughs> I would hear and why he was saying and then he gonna say it like this yeah. and then he gonna be smart and, he gonna be, and, and so I said okay wait till my time to talk mm-hmm. now I wasn't trying to hear nothing he was saying nothing. about the issue yeah <laughs> none of the issue wouldn't even hand yeah. it's like baby yeah, when you get through I'm gonna make back. my comeback yeah. I said oh, I'm gonna slam and so that's what it was we wasn't even trying to attack the issue the yeah. problem we was like I was focused on he said it like this yeah and and he said it like that, mm-hmm. and it and, and and so and and in his body gestures and the way he was standing, the way he was looking when he said it, and how he leaned back like he was ready, you know. Yeah. So I was I wasn't even focusing on what he was trying to tell me or nothing. I was just focused on how he said it, his tone of voice. Mm-hmm. And I say, oh, but baby, when my time to speak, <laughs> you ain't think about this issue. No, ain't think about <laughs> nothing. It so yeah, we were there. Yeah. So yeah, so, we were, so that was one of the ones we noticed that we did. Yeah. Uh, number two, they says that uh, one of the ten habits of people that are the most toxic relationships. Mm-hmm. Number two is said they have a separate identity. They don't have separate identities. Uh-huh. Now this is we don't have a problem. We did have separate identities. Mm-hmm. We did that from the beginning. We had yeah. all separate interests. We have mm-hmm. separate hobbies. We have yeah. separate kind of things that we yeah. like to do, and mm-hmm. so we never had a problem with that. Yeah, I just, just I think maybe a little bit. Not yeah. much, much, much. Yeah, it just, not a whole he, lot. With the game, yeah. and I just felt like, well, I don't think I just felt like he, uh, he gamed too much, and he put it before me. Yeah. And I was on the phone with Facebook, t- and Twitter, I did, yeah, and she did that. And too I much, she but put I it think, me. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think after that, we kind of got once, that. Once we got balance, that was the thing. Once yeah. we got balance, balance, yeah. Then and we started getting into each other's world, which yeah. that was one of the things that we 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 had to realize mm-hmm. yeah. that we weren't in each other's world yeah because we was basically using that to escape mm-hmm. she was using it to escape and i was using it to escape we didn't yeah. realize it but we was doing the same thing yeah and i would want yeah. him to stop so i think my critical part was i wouldn't ask him i would throw out little hint hints yeah i would hint out you know <laughs> who is uh let's say he got over that three and i come <laughs> past by it's nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly what she would do. <laughs> it's nine o'clock. Uh, oh, are you gonna be through anytime soon? You know, one yeah. of them kind. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, are uh, you gonna be on the game all night? Yeah, that, yeah, that's another one. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell no one about to be done. So yeah, and uh, but so the, I oh. had to. So I had to. I had to stop doing that. And, and I had to stop <laughs> gaming so long. Now I do have a. Now that I, most of the time, 
I utilize the time that I do game for my streaming time. I do stream gaming. So I, now I start doing that. I say, well, I, 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 I go to my PlayStation. I go into my Twitch and I get the stream going. I don't say anything. Mm -hmm. I just stream it because I want to get content. I want to keep content. Mm -hmm. So I do that and use that as the time. And, it, and, mm -hmm. I, and I do from the time I get home. Yeah. Uh, I made like the first 30 minutes I may not do it but then yeah. I'll click it on and she'll come sit down and she'll talk and she'll be having some good conversation too Yeah, because totally. she's full of that red that, that <laughs> the energy drink and we were saying uh, I wish we'd talk about some of this well yeah. we'll probably yeah. bring up some of the stuff that we talked about today yeah cause uh, oh we actually not, discussed this that's what we yeah we were, we were discussing this and yeah. so now I do support the game and now yeah, she so down I'm going to tell y'all the positive side yeah so uh I do support this game and now, mm -hmm. and I do encourage it. So now I'd be like, well, you going to stream? You going to stream? Yeah, so she now, asked me if I so stream. So now I am. Yeah. So we have made progress. So yeah. We, want, we don't want to tell you all the downside. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Side. That's that's the truth. She, yeah. That's what I was going to say. She do. Now she'll come and sit beside me, and, and she'll ask me if I'm streaming. I say, no. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, you know, kind of catching up on some stuff. I say, but I might stream later. But then... Mm -hmm. When she mentioned it, I was like, you know what? Because I tell like yesterday. <laughs> I had to stop because I was getting disgusted. I was playing this God of War. There's one particular thing I was playing on there. Is what yeah. you have to kill these Valkyries. The Valkyries are like these women warriors. And they hard. Yeah. And I got one that was real hard. And I was dying a lot. And I started frustrated. So you know what? I said, I'm glad I wasn't on the mic. Because that would, they would have saw how salty I was about yeah. it. I actually switched yeah. games. I did. Yeah. I ended up switching to Destiny 2. And I was like, well, you know what? I ain't played that in a minute. Because mm -hmm. I finished God of War. I did the whole campaign, the whole story. We did the spread of ashes. And yeah. I didn't go home. Because uh -huh. I think you have to go home and then you have to finish it. But actually, yeah. when you see the credits, and you mm -hmm. spread ashes and see the credits. That was it. Yeah, and you was losing, and guess what? I still sit here. She did. She said, like, "Baby, you gonna get it." And I encouraged. There was him a couple of it. times I almost got her, but yeah, I was like, "No, I, was, so I started I getting tired." There. Yeah, and I, I encouraged him and say, "You know, yeah. you gonna you gonna get it." Yeah. So. And I'm gonna go. Uh, I I want to go back in it fresh, so I didn't put it on. I say, "Well, I'm gonna go one of these mornings. I'm gonna get on there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play it and be the and them, that be that one yeah. that one Valkyrie. I ain't playing no more after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm gonna gave, find an easier one next time. Yeah, gave a rock for his money. <laughs> that man, that thing was that thing was vicious. I ain't never seen that. They, I have to tell y'all about it later when we play. Yeah, just uh, when I stream, stream, I'll have to give you the that that rundown on that. <laughs> But we do have set, we do have set friends. According to uh, uh, Amy Kip, which is another uh, couples and ther family therapist in San Antonio, she, her quote was, it's not having their own habits and interests and opinions is a hallmark of a relationship that is overly merged or too close mm -hmm. and or and too close. These couples have a tendency to have uncertainty around relationship and any separation, even healthy ones, mm -hmm. uh, can feel like a threat to alleviate that anxiety to become fused. Mm -hmm. So they said that the desire to spend time with coworkers can, after work, can become an argument, and say this is a sign of an abusive, controlling relationship. Like I've seen some, we've seen some, and known some people like that. Yes, that they. <laughs> we was actually we were discussing about a friend of, a uh, common friend of ours. They mm -hmm. a couple now. They're friends of ours now. Yeah, and um, she was a friend of mine. She was my closest female friend before my wife. My wife's my only female friend. Yeah. And she's my best friend. And mm -hmm. she was my best female friend and close friend. Matter of fact, we was like, we was close in age. We were the same age. We mm -hmm. just like 10 months apart. I was yeah. born in January. She was born in, in, in October. Mm -hmm. And so, and I've been knowing her since high school. So I met her when I came down here. We've been knowing each other been since yeah. high school. So <clears throat> when I met, when uh, one of the, and it's funny though, to show you how God is. One of the signs that I knew that my wife was my wife, it was three things I think it said. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it was two. It was two, two of them. I said that my mother would love her mm -hmm. and that my best friend would like her. Yeah. And my best friend at the time was, was Eric. Mm -hmm. And Eric is crazy about my wife. She yeah. loved my wife. Still do. Yeah. And my mom, my mom fell in love with her too. She yeah. she called her she she mama my wife called my mom mama. Yeah. And she 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 loved both of us equally. Yeah. And, and we so, don't want to tell that story. Yeah, we had to tell you. We yeah, don't want to tell that story. You know, yeah, they don't want to offend them. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to use that. We don't want to use that. We don't put <laughs> yeah. Well, so what happened? <laughs> what ended up happening is uh, like I said, we so we ended up having to uh. 
that was a sign that I knew that she was the one. So, mm -hmm. but the thing is, that person, uh, my best friend at the time, uh, like I said, we had, well, we dated, mm -hmm. uh, when me and my wife were dating. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they had, uh, no, when I, when my, when, when my, when my two contacts, these two couples were, when these two were engaged, this mm -hmm. we talking about, they had a lot of criticism. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so there's a lot of different things that happened in their relationship, which mm -hmm. caused them to say, you know, we gonna have to separate some stuff. Yeah. But their, their relationship, we know, but I know about relationships that weren't, were really like that. Like, mm -hmm. uh, we might, like, uh, we knew some couples. Yeah. We knew one couple for sure uh -huh. that I related to one of them. <laughs> <laughs> that this man would not have, wouldn't want her to go nowhere without mm -hmm. him, wouldn't want to do anything without him. Yeah. And they were like, they had, they had common interests, the only common interests. They had common interests. They wow. both did the same thing. Yeah. They both went to the same places. They both did the same thing. She had no individual life. He had no individual life. Mm -hmm. She couldn't do anything without him, yeah. and she didn't do anything without him. Yeah. And until he died, and still she like you know. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, nope, that's not good because if you don't have any different interests, mm -hmm. it's good. And I want my wife to have different interests. I want yeah. her to be interested in the same. I would like mm -hmm. you. As far as recreational, mm -hmm. we, we have the same interest, and it's good yeah. for you to have that recreational mm -hmm. uh, life. You didn't have recreation in your life, fun in your life. Yeah. You know, you go do some fun things together. So, but mm -hmm. she don't like the same things I like. No. And, and she don't, and I don't like the same things she likes. Uh -uh. And that's what makes us different. That's what mm -hmm. makes the compliments each other. When yeah. you, if you had somebody, and we was talking about that, so we had somebody that lives like us, we wouldn't have been married long. No. If I had somebody just like me, we wouldn't mm -hmm. have been married long. Mm -hmm. people that, some people, when they seek for a mate, yeah. they looking for somebody like them. Just no. like them. Uh-uh. You don't want nobody like yeah. you. And I think my biggest mistake, uh, because he wasn't just like me, mm -hmm. I tried to make him me. Yeah, I wanted I a did little, I wanted thing, a little, yeah. I wanted a mini me. Yeah. That was the biggest, the first year of the marriage was I wanted a mini make, me. Yeah. I wanted to make him like me. This is how I do it. This is yeah. how I want it done. So I wanted him to conform to the way that yeah. I do things. This yeah. is how I do things around here. Mm -hmm. And you need to get with the program. And I was trying to make her like me. So the, yeah. And trying to bring my way of doing things yeah. into it. And, you know. And, and not let him have his own individuality. Yeah. So, and, I, and I had to realize that we are two different people. Yeah. So we come to realize that. So, yeah, you do have your. But I did come into his world. Yeah. She eventually came into it. Once she did yeah. that, it, uh. It made it easier yeah, but, for us. And to it made be able a difference because if y'all be around us, we have nothing. I mean, if y'all was to give no. us an interview, we have nothing at no. all in common. He <laughs> likes Star Wars, Star Trek, um, <laughs> little stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm like, Ugh, you know, but I'm I mean, not. I'm sci-fi. Yeah, so now nah, I watch Star Trek probably more than him. Yeah, <laughs> she do. <laughs> I used to watch it religiously every night. She, uh, I used to watch the same yeah. ones. I would watch whole, you know, whole series. Yeah. Know? So now you come home. And you I come home. home. It'll be on. It'll be on. Home. <laughs> <laughs> she now she likes the original. The original Star Trek. Yeah, she like what Spock and uh, Jane Kirk, and yeah. she liked the original old one. So I would like the that deal with that old one too sometimes. And I say so new ones that I, I watch a lot of them, and there's one particular one I like, and so mm -hmm. she'll see. The one I watch, and she'll put that episode on, and she'll be knocked out. That's when I used to work at, at night. night. Mm -hmm. And I used to come in, and she would already fix my food, and she'd already have it in the, in the microwave. And she would know, eat before I go to sleep. And I will, and I will watch Star Trek, Trek two, three episodes before I go to sleep. So, you know, like 30-minute episodes. So I watched about an hour and a half of that, and I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, yeah, it's – but we had to get there. I mean, yeah. it took it took some years, but mm -hmm. we, we got there. And I had to learn how to come in her world because she shops and she likes to go and look at stuff. And I had to go walk around with her and look at things. And then she asked me what I think, and I was like, yeah, it's, that's nice. Now, mm -hmm. And I do have an eye for that kind of stuff. So it was easy for me to – look at so now i know it's when something looks nice and mm -hmm. whatever you know and i'm you know i'm not totally like you know i'm not no girly dude but i ain't no you know <laughs> <laughs> now sometimes you know i'll be like because a lot of times i don't walk a lot mm -hmm. i walk a lot as it is and then 
sometimes it takes a toll on me when she, cause she has, I don't shop with her. I tell you that. I don't shop with her. <laughs> She'll tell you. Unless she wants me to come in and actually do something, then yeah, then mm -hmm. I'll go in there too. But let's it, it's, it's, it's move along. Yeah. But they don't have separate identities, and that's bad. If you're not in it, you don't have individuality, and you don't have your own individual things, then it does kind of hamper things in your relationship. You come confused. That means you come, you're almost like twins. Yeah. You know, you don't even have the same. You know, you like a clone. That may be better, better, better for. Yeah. You're a clone of the other person, mm -hmm. basically. All right, number three. Uh, People that have habits, uh, tend to have as people in most toxic relationships, number three, is say they have a few friends outside the relationship. Now, mm -hmm. we only have a few couples that we're friends with. We're not yeah. our friends with a whole lot of people, but we don't get out much, as mm -hmm. you can see. No, we, don't. <laughs> we, we go when we when we want to, but yeah. we really, we work and we get a call and see, close that door. We don't go out of it unless uh -huh. we have to. Yeah. So, but we do have friends that we decided we wanted to hang. We got some couples that we say, hey, y'all y'all do anything, we'll go hang with them. Mm -hmm. And so, but they said, in, in uh, according to Marie Land, um, of a psychologist in Washington, she says here, it's a quote, individuals in toxic relationships often hide aspects of their relationship from people they, that care about them. Mm -hmm. They all have can make a challenge in this to spend much time with friends as they did pro uh, prior to the relationship. Mm -hmm. Controlling other's people are usually critical of their partner's friends and mm -hmm. of their partner spending time with others. Yeah. We, yeah. We talked about that earlier. Yeah. And we were saying how a lot of times that it have uh, a lot to do with that person. Yeah. It uh, When you want to tell them, well, you know, I don't want you hanging with her and I don't want you hanging around, you know, I think it's sometimes some kind of ten, uh, jealousy. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of jealousy about uh, behind that, a lot of insecurity about that. Yeah. You know, for um, we could just, uh, a lot of this couple that we know. Yeah. She had a problem with her husband hanging around his family. Yeah. And he's very family oriented. Yeah. And, um, you know, and he would just go, like, just say football season. He want to go be around his brother's cousin. They have this thing that they would do for the football season. And she would be so up. Set and she would be livid. She would be. She would be totally. Just, yeah, I mean, would just be like mad. She'd be upset, and I'm like, you know, and she had a problem with him going around his family. It was just a bunch of dudes. Yeah, we counseled. I think that was our first couple. We counseled. Yeah. Uh -huh. We counseled them, and we found out that they were totally different as far yeah. as their belief system. Now, mm -hmm. here's the thing with her was I think she she was the only child. I think no, she had a brother, didn't she? Yeah, she had a brother. It was her and her brother. brother yeah. And her mother was uh, real famous where we live, and yeah. she was, you know, she was, uh, mm -hmm. I think she was like a, uh, she brought in groups and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and mm -hmm. she was singing, and, well, kind of sang, but yeah. <laughs> she run around the time my mom and them was running, and my mom yeah. knew her, and, yeah. you know, she knew her, <laughs> so, and, uh, but she was a member of our church, her daughter and her son. Mm -hmm. and uh and her daughter was married to this guy who actually we were talking about he and they were actually living together for a long time before they mm -hmm. got married mm -hmm. so when they finally got married there was stuff start to come up mm -hmm. <laughs> usually that's when marriage does yeah. one thing about marriage i'm gonna tell you this one thing about marriage it will basically bring out whatever is in you mm -hmm. it will it's it's a crucible it will bring up to surface whatever's there so if you got some stuff that you had before you got married, when you get together, it's mm -hmm. going to surface. So you might as well get ready. Mm -hmm. It's how you deal with it when mm -hmm. it surfaces is whether you stay together or not. Yeah. And so what happens, something surfaced in their life, and he, she didn't realize that he was that close to her family. Now, she was close to her mom, and her brother was kind of out there, and he wasn't really around, but they were, she was close to her mom. But the thing is is that, um, the thing is, is that what happened he was more closer to his family and he always was around his family and she was like well he always want to go over to his family house and he always want to be around his family he always want to say man that's my family i say yeah. but he had to consider the fact too man now nah, you a married man yeah see well, when he was they were living together and they weren't married that mm -hmm. was different mm -hmm. but he didn't grab grasp the concept that i'm a married man now and there were certain things, and she was thinking, that's what her thinking was. He's mm -hmm. married now. He shouldn't really just be hanging around his family and mm -hmm. not ignoring me. But then on the same token, 
She shouldn't act like she want to be a recluse once they get married. Yeah. If you was hanging around them before you got married, mm -hmm. what's wrong now? Yeah. And so that was the thing that was the issue. And I yeah. was like, so, so she was trying know, to yeah. isolate. Yeah. Or maybe uh, he was just hanging around them. He so probably was hanging much. about too much. Yeah. Because he was really close to his sister. Because I met his sister and they, mm -hmm. they was really tight. And they was like, you know, but I guess he was raised up to be real close to this. Like, yeah, they, we yeah. raised our kids, well, my wife, like I say, mm -hmm. she, was, she raised our kids, she raised them all. They were all close in age. Mm -hmm. So she raised them to, to play together. You yeah. know, if you ain't play with nobody else, play with each other. Yeah, and that's how I raised them. Y'all yeah. play together. Yeah, and so, they, yeah, and they, they all close. was close, mm -hmm. yeah. And so they might argue, fuss, and fight, but and and, and hit each other in the mouth if they get all lying with each other. Yeah. But I guarantee you, they will push on the shove. You better not yeah. push, mess with one of them. Yeah, cause yeah, my kids are very close. Yeah, they're very close. Yeah. yeah. So, like I say, you know, we all we just had a call for one of them right there. <laughs> so, anyway, we already know what that's about. So. Number four, like I said, we have a few friends. If you don't have any outside friends at a couple, then I suggest that you do that. Don't get no opposite sex uh, single friends. If you're mm -hmm. a man, don't have no single, uh, or what we sound, uh, it brings to mind mm -hmm. a movie. What was the uh, movie? Uh, Brown Sugar, I think it yeah. was. The guy had did a clip we saw on uh, YouTube video. He had a clip from the movie how this guy had a f girl that he was friends with, just like I had a female friend when I met my wife. Yeah. But he had a female friend that he went was in school with and grew up through all this stuff and that. And, and so they was getting the girl uh, came to his wedding. And of course, he wanted her there, mm -hmm. but he was in love with this other well, sort of in love with this other chick. He was, but he come to find out. He was in love with the other girl, mm -hmm. the one that he was writ all them years, which, by the way, he ended up marrying him because he really wasn't in love with this other girl. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that if he was going to remain in a relationship with her, he should have cut this relationship off or bring it to a minimum or reprioritize that relationship and say, hey, I'm, I'm finna get married now. We may not be... She gonna be my new best friend. Yeah. You may have to deal with that and how you handle it, yeah. you know, it's up to you. Because <laughs> yeah. we ain't gonna, because really when we, and, when my wife and I got married, you know. We cut off all the, we, we, all we those had old, that. yeah, we cut off all the old ties with all the uh, yeah. friends. We didn't that. have, actually, we didn't have any. We didn't have ties. any friends, but yeah. well, we, if you have friends with benefits. Yeah, we didn't have We'll none say that because yeah. I guess according to the movie, she was a friend with benefits. She was a friend with benefits. And so, dogs. and a lot of times, you know, that can cause problems. Yeah. You know, if you have a friend with benefits and we know the benefits or <laughs> we're not going to yeah. let you go there. We're yeah. not going to have that. This, this is going to be another podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, some things you do have to uh, cut loose. We were talking about that earlier, but yeah. it's a way that you can do it. Yeah. You know, without being uh, toxic. Yeah. That's what we was dealing with, how, how you're doing it in a toxic way. Yeah. And how you could be demanding and doing it out of jealousy and this, mm -hmm. um, this use, for example, um, uh, when we first got married, like I say, you had, you know, that was a best friend, I we gonna call her name, and uh, mm -hmm. and I didn't, well, I wasn't demanding and say, well, you look, you know, uh, you need to end this, mm -hmm. you know, because I have jealousy issues or I have uh, insecurities. Yeah. I didn't come at him with all that. Yeah. I didn't say, well, look, you need to end this relationship with her because that I, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. I didn't do that with him. Yeah. He on his own just you know winged you know he, yeah he ended it. basically yeah, he, ended yeah, it, yeah. He ended I, it. and uh, now mind you like I say when she got married um, <clears throat> we renewed the friendship mm -hmm. as couples yeah and so her her and her husband and 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 my wife and I they're mm -hmm. they're friends of ours and they yeah. have been as a matter of fact I like to say they looked out for us a few times and mm -hmm. it's like I say in the in the past I think it's yeah. funny though my wife. Uh, her husband actually uh, shopped for my wife a Mother's Day card one time because mm -hmm. I didn't have a way to get it, and he did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he ended up getting a, a nice a nice card too. I was like, <laughs> I was like, brother got nine because he's he's yeah. mama's boy, so of course mm -hmm. he was going he was best candidate for it. I wasn't mama's boy. I'm just gonna tell you that now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I love my mama, but my mom I wasn't really that close like that. You know, mm -hmm. he was, and so. I had to counsel her a few times about that. So, <laughs> so number thing, uh, continuing on, we're at number four of the uh, habits, ten habits that people or most 
toxic relationship, uh, they put up walls, number four. Mm -hmm. uh, according to uh, Alicia Clark, which is another psychologist in Washington, says this, and quote, uh, avoiding uh, communication and connection with the partner can be particularly dangerous and habits would lead to feelings of isolation and loneliness. Communication mm -hmm. is a two-way, uh, all right, yeah, two-way, as it's hard to be compassionate with your partner going on. Uh, yeah, when communication doesn't communicate what's going on, when uh -huh. your partner doesn't communicate what's going on, yeah. Yeah. Let's say, um, so, it says it's hard to be compassionate. Mm -hmm. when your partner doesn't communicate what's going on. Right. So, and that's the truth. Yeah, it is. That you, is the truth. If you can't put up walls. Yeah. And a lot of times we did, and in one particular uh, case, we did do that. We put up walls. A lot. A lot. And I tried did, to. Because he would try to, um, he would try to reach out to me. Yeah. And uh, he would be like, well, uh, if I, he see my mood changing or things about me start to change, he would recognize it. Yeah. And he would say, well, baby, you all right? I'd be like, yeah, I'll be all right. <laughs> he said, you shall sound fine. I'll be all right. Mm -hmm. You know, I just say something like that. I'll be all right because mm -hmm. I was had a wall up. Yeah. And uh, and he'd be like, well, you want to talk? I said, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah. You know, so I'll be like that with him. Well, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> you yeah, know, that yeah, one. Yeah, That's, yeah. That was, a, that. that was the number yeah. one. Yeah, I'm going to be all right. Mm -hmm. You know, knowing that things wasn't, you know, that I wasn't happy about something that he did or he said or something mm -hmm. instead of me just coming out and saying i just put that wall up like yeah. you know figuring that he should be able to read my mind he should know how i'm feeling he should know what i'm dealing with but mm -hmm. truth be told he didn't so i put yeah. this wall up you know because i feel like hey you should know and there was a few yeah. times though it wasn't yeah. really wasn't me it no. was just outside of me yeah Cause a lot of times you have to realize too that you know even though we look, you know, youthful and young, we're not, yeah. you know, and then, you know, we were going through changes. It's funny, though, and we went through midlife crisis at the same time. Yes. Yeah. So we went, I went through my phase of it, and she went through her phase of it, and yeah. so we were dealing with it at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn how every every time she would transition a, a decade, because we she was in her 30s and I was my late 20s she mm -hmm. was in her um, like close mid 30s huh? mm -hmm. she was 33 hours and well you we gonna tell our age now mm -hmm. she was 33 and i was 28 so you can figure out how old we are now married 20 years yeah. do the math so anyway <laughs> <laughs> so when she transitioned into her 40s and i was still in my third i think 30s at the time and so god told me basically what i was gonna have to deal with he said when she get in her 40s when she get 40 she mm -hmm. said on 40 he said when she get 40 she'll be different She's not going to be the same as she was when she was in her 30s. And she's also, she's going toward her later years. And so she's in the in-between time. Mm -hmm. She's going to be a little bit more clingy. Because <laughs> <laughs> women, are, they, they start mature at a later age. They even yeah. say she's mature at a later age. So let's say she's going to be more clingy. She's going to be more uh, needy of you. So you're mm -hmm. going to have to get ready for that. Mm -hmm. And then our kids, by that time, are kind of getting out the house. Mm -hmm. So, of course, yeah, she was kind of like that because she was getting into her being like crisis her own self. So when she got into about, you know, when she started to go into closer in, into later on in the 50s, mm -hmm. he told me again. <laughs> he said, now she's on top of the hill and she's going to be looking at the one where she used to be. And, she, and, and, and when I listen to her, she refers a lot to that person. Mm -hmm. versus now and mm -hmm. so and she say she gonna talk a lot about that because she's mm -hmm. looking back at what she was and then she's looking forward to who she's about to be mm -hmm. and for a woman that's or any person actually but especially for a woman that's scary yeah because when you're getting into uh when you get in that mark and i'm a few what i'm up three years away from that myself yeah when you start looking at that you like it stuff starts to perspective start to change especially mm -hmm. and then chemically she told me she'll start changing because of course she go into menopause and say your attitude's going to be a little <laughs> different <laughs> so you got had to get ready for that and mm -hmm. so when she started going through that and a lot of it i knew wasn't mm -hmm. me i know a lot of it she was going through that change mm -hmm. and i had to study i became a student of a lot i learned mm -hmm. every time she would go through something i would look it up mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like I'm trying to find out what was, what was going on with her 
So I had to, and it gave me, and the Bible tells us to, to husbands to, to dwell with the wives with understanding, uh, honoring them as a weaker vessel, and the heirs together as the grace of light that your prayers be not hindered. Dwell yeah. with them with understanding. Get to know them. Yeah. Uh, one of the things, and I was really looking at the movie Love Dare, mm -hmm. and uh, it was talking about how that one of the things was to become a student of your wife. Mm -hmm. And you saw talking about you had to, uh, some of you had to be, graduate to certain levels to learn to stand and you had to question and find out and study her. Yeah. And so you had to study your mate. You had mm -hmm. to find out what's their likes, dislikes, what they what make what what takes them what makes them mad and what doesn't make them mad. What mm -hmm. makes them happy? What makes them sad? Why did it you know, mm -hmm. what's their motivation? What's their passions? You know, what mm -hmm. what's their dreams, their goals, their desires? What yeah. they want to do with you? What they want to do apart from you? Or mm -hmm. do, you know, what will happen if you're not with them? Mm -hmm. You know, we looked and we talked about a lot of that stuff. We so did. It, yeah. yeah. What would happen if we weren't together and mm -hmm. how we would function, which we wouldn't function too much, but we'd make it. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't make, uh, we wouldn't marry again. I know that. Mm -hmm. We was talking I, about I that. My, say, yeah, one of my coworkers, he's been married like 38 years, and we was talking about that and how we would once, if we was something happened to our wives, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be able to function. We thought the same thought. And then we also said that we wouldn't marry again. We wouldn't say, why would I want to do this again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, and I said the same thing. Yeah, I, said, me and, mm -hmm. I told me and my wife no, talked about so that. I said, I wouldn't marry again. I'd I, I, I give me a, some a cat. No, no, no. <laughs> get a cat. I, I get a little puppy. Get, yeah, she little get a puppy. puppy some she, fish. She don't like that. And, and, and some birds or something. It'd <laughs> be, be a house full of little, little animals and stuff running around and little yeah. puppies and fish. <laughs> well, we got to do this one, and then we're going to finish the rest on uh, next time. Well, we we got to do five. Yeah, we can show them. Yeah, we got, no, I, I, I'm, I can do two, do another part. We'll do a part four. Um, five. We got to do five because mm -hmm. that's this is a big one. Okay. Five says is they they have a me versus you mentality. Uh, <laughs> according to uh, Kip again, I think Kip was the person who spoke earlier. For, yeah. Uh, okay. is when the conflict becomes about who is right rather than solving the issue, even or just hearing each other, it's very difficult to resolve. Every conflict stacks on top of the last one, making mm -hmm. it more and more likely that a couple will break into a fight again. When you feel like you're on, not on the same team, it affects every area of a relationship negatively. And that's kind of what we were doing for six months. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. We were feeling like we were on the same team. Mm -hmm. We were allowing every other problem to stack on the one that was before that, and yeah. it, it just kept escalating. Yeah. And it wasn't getting in. We weren't resolving. All we was doing was stacking. Yeah. So we were just taking one thing that happened. We'd stack that on the last thing that happened. Yeah. Then we'd take that and stack that on the last thing that happened. And we'd mm -hmm. take that and stack that on the last thing that happened. Mm -hmm. So we kept stacking them up. And then next day we trying to deal with a stack of stuff instead of dealing mm -hmm. one thing at a time. Yeah. And we went to the council and said, you can only deal with one issue at a time. Right. You, what we were trying to do was deal with all the issues at the same time. Exactly. And it wasn't going to work. Yeah, because we, uh, and then they got to one part where we wasn't even de dealing with the issues. Yeah, we was dealing with we, we was uh We wasn't even trying to attack the problem, the issues. We was attacking each other. Yeah. So that way, the issues wouldn't never get solved in the first place mm -hmm. because we wasn't focusing on the issues. We was just focusing on. Who was right. Right, yeah, who was yeah. right and who was try and trying, and, and trying to get our point across. Yeah, we was trying to, uh, who and be, was. And to be heard. Yeah, and to be heard and to yeah. see who would win. So know. yeah, so now we we learn it. So we are gonna tell you the positive side that yeah. what we did to get on the right track. Yeah, was um, he had wanted to be heard, so I had to learn how to uh, shut my mouth. I'm just gonna say it and be quiet and listen, mm -hmm. and uh, to listen to listen to him. Yeah, to hear his side of the story, you know, tell myself you're not always right. It's not always about you. Yeah, you know he have feelings. He have a point. He need to get it across. Yeah. And you need to be quiet, shut up, and listen. Mm -hmm. So I had to tell myself that, and I had to also do to do it. Yeah. So, and now I let him tell what he... Well, I did the same thing. I had to just... Uh, I went according to the word. It says, mm -hmm. be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow mm -hmm. to get angry. My thing was I had to be more patient with her and mm -hmm. let her express herself regardless of how it came across. Yeah. Because I, I was more concerned about how she's saying it versus mm -hmm. what she was saying. I wasn't really listening to it because mm -hmm. of her tone. Mm -hmm. But then I had to realize that she was upset and I had to listen to her 
and be patient with her and let her express it because she was trying to tell me what was wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just that when it was coming from here to here, it mm -hmm. wasn't, it just wasn't clicking because yeah. she might have been really knowing what she wanted to say. And we do that. We mm -hmm. know what we want to say, but then when we say it, it don't come out right. And mm -hmm. that's what I had to realize that mm -hmm. I did, I wasn't, because I, I would listen to myself and I always listen to, I had a habit of listening to what I say, and so when people tell me you said this, I'm like, no, I listen to what I say. I know mm -hmm. I ain't say that. Yeah. But the thing is, is, a lot of times when you're emotional, you can't hear correctly. Right. And I had to really get calm, and not be upset, and every little thing, and oh, here she is again, doing it again. I just yeah. had to listen. Mm -hmm. So that was our thing. But like I say, that's only five, mm -hmm. and we're gonna do the other uh, five mm -hmm. on tomorrow. Yeah. We're going to end the podcast this week with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we want to share with you, basically, uh, you can check our website, which is under our uh, under us there, which is uh, Bracing Marriage Together without WordPress.com. Mm -hmm. It'll have a link for this podcast and other uh, things that we have. Uh, like I said, we're going to start the month when we get a chance. So we're going to start in June doing mm -hmm. a, a blog. Uh, we're going to see how we're we'll frequent what frequency we're going to do it at. We're going to do it whether daily or weekly or whatever. We're going to, uh, she's going to be the one doing it. She got mm -hmm. some stuff lined up. And I'm going to type it out and put it as a post. It'll be a blog post on our website. Mm -hmm. So we want you to, if you're listening to this on YouTube, which you are basically looking at YouTube, like, share, subscribe. Also, uh, hit the bell, which is uh, by down there. There's a notification letting you know uh, when our next videos are coming out. Uh, you can also check us if you're a gamer. You can also check us on twitch.tv forward slash embracing underscore gaming dot 149. Uh, check follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Blah, blah, blah. Yada, yada, yada. Yak, yak, yak. <laughs> so, <laughs> all that. <laughs> so we thank God for you. I know it's a little long. Like I say, we want to just basically bring you to uh, bring you something that you can just be able to be uh, encouraged by. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I say, we're going to go through the next five. And we also give you examples of what we did to come out of those particular situations. So we, so we thank God for you. And on next time, we're going to talk about part four of toxic relationships. Good night and be blessed. Amen. God bless you.